Um, thank you very much. Uh, not being myself a, a string theorist, um, I'm uh, very honored of being invited here, and I thank you very much, all of you, for uh, being here and listening. Um, I will talk about loop quantum gravity, and uh, I assume uh, uh, I will assume that most of the audience here know very li knows very little about this uh, uh, search program. So what I'm going to do is to give you an overview. Um, with the main ideas, the main results, and uh, just uh, a few words about the main current lines of uh, uh, investigation. What I'm going to do is to start by discussing exactly what is the problem that is uh, addressed, and uh, an uh, introduction um, to uh, motivate, to explain what are the loops using here and why, which I will uh, use also to introduce some te technical uh, notions like the spin network basis that is, happens later. And then the main part of the talk, I'll describe the theory. Um, uh, first the kinematics and then the dynamics. Uh, think uh, as if I was uh, in introducing QED by first giving the Fox space of the electron and photons creation and annihilation operators, and then the QED vertex. Uh, for the dynamics. And then I will list uh, some of the uh, main uh, uh, applications. Um, and in particular, I hope I will have some time at the end uh, to talk about the uh, recent calculations of um, endpoint functions, uh, which are used to test the low energy limit of the, of the theory. So uh, what is loop quantum gravity? It's a research program that has been developing now for about more than 20 years, uh, there are roughly 200 people, and uh, the many books allow me to advertise my own book. Um, uh, what is the problem which is addressed here? The problem is how to describe the elementary degrees of freedom of a quantum field theory when uh, there is no uh, background uh, uh, space-time. Um, the way this problem is addressed is uh, starting from a, a few hypotheses. So let me put this up front. Uh, first, that uh, a uh, uh, radical uh, conceptual change in the way we treat uh, space and time are needed. Uh, but on the other hand, that this problem can be addressed uh, within uh, uh, current, within the context of current uh, physical theories, current effective physical theory, you know, generativity plus uh, uh, standard model of some small extension of the standard model. And uh, uh, the reason is that because this uh, uh, problem already uh, is there when uh, uh, you try to uh, define uh, at high energy a quantum field theory of uh, any theory which includes generativity, as I'll discuss. Now, of course, this goes together with uh, another hypothesis, which is an old idea that the uh, bad divergences of uh, uh, perturbative generativity are not like the ones of uh, uh, the old uh, Fermi theory of weak interaction, a sign of sickness of the theory by itself, but rather an indication that the perturbative uh, theory is uh, uh, not correct in this uh, context. The, the, the perturbation around the smooth uh, uh, solution, uh, it's wrong because uh, it's, uh, in, it introduces, uh, it's a wrong vacuum, it introduces in the theory some extra degrees of freedom which are not there at high energy. And this, I will show, a posteriori is confirmed within the loop approach, where one sees that, uh, in some sense, transplankian degrees of freedom are not there in the non perturbative theory. Now, the guiding principle, like in uh, uh, so much of uh, modern physics, is symmetry, and it's the symmetry under uh, the uh, diffeomorphism group, the, the action of the diffeomorphism group on the, uh, the active action of the diffeomorphism group on the fields of the theory, um, which I'll discuss in the next transparency. Now, consistency with uh, uh, quantum mechanics and generativity and uh, having a fully diffeomorphic invariant theory, um, explicitly diffeomorphic invariant theory, gives very strong constraints on the theory. The, the difficulty here is find one theory that has this property, not find which theory that has this property. So for the moment, the problem is, is, is uh, uh, finding uh, one. The main result, uh, which I hope to illustrate, is the definition of a theory, or more precisely, a framework for defining uh, uh, theories, uh, uh, both in the canonical and in uh, uh, the covariant uh, form, a, a quantum field theory that has the property of being invariant under uh, diffeomorphism. Now, before 
beginning, let me uh, make a comment about general relativity, because this is a source, of, a source of misunderstanding often in the communication between different uh, communities. In a sense, general relativity is two different theories. Uh, first, it is a specific theory uh, for one field with this action, and which is, of course, well supported empirically at low energy, but we don't know if high energy is corrected and how. Um, so uh, there's nothing wholly about this particular action of uh, generativity from this point of view. However, generativity is also some, something else. It's a modification of the way we understand space and time. Of course, the, uh, the, the idea, or the discovery of Einstein is that space-time is the same thing as the gravitational field. I like to say there is no space-time. There is only the gravitational field. So in a sense, we have moved with generativity from a picture of the world in which the fields live on, on, a, on, a, on, a, on, a, on a given fixed metric manifold to another picture in which the fields live on top of one another. And the problem of doing quantum gravity is, I think, um, the problem of understanding how to do that um, in the context of quantum uh, field theory a solution to how to do that in the problem of classical field, uh, uh, field theory is, in fact, the one provided by Einstein uh, in, in, in 1915. Now, in the theory, this modification uh, is expressed by the invariance and the theory uh, under the uh, action of the Fermi group. The field is defined on a manifold, but then the theory is invariant and arbitrary is most displacement of this uh, field. So, in a sense, the manifold, the physical interpretation of the manifold is washed away by the invariance of the theory. Now, <clears throat> let me remind you, I think that most of you are more or less familiar with old ideas about non-perturbative quantum gravity in the canonical uh, framework a la Willer de Witt or the covariant framework sort of mostly associated to the name of Hawking. Here you have a function of a geometry invariant and diffeomorphism, a Willer de Witt equation. Here you have an integral of all four geometries with or without an I. Now, these are beautiful ideas that have inspired much work, but they have never worked uh, by themselves for defining a theory where one can compute things. If you try to compute there, you don't get anything, or if you expand around some uh, background, you get back all the ultraviolet divergences. So in a sense, you can view loop quantum gravity as a way of doing all that uh, to a level of precision where you can start computing and, and getting numbers out of these uh, 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 expressions. Now, why loops? Loops are an old idea in uh, 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 physics, of course, and there's a long list of uh, major people, uh, some of whom are here, who have um, uh, uh, sort of uh, uh, argued for the, uh, 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 the idea of expressing gauge theories uh, in terms of, uh, of loops. In a sense, it can be take, traced back to Faraday, right? Faraday introduced field theory um, as a, a, a congruence of lines in space, and then the electric field is just a tangent of the, of the line, of the Faraday line in one point. Now, if there are no charges, the, the lines may close. These are the loops. And the gravitational um, generativity also can be expressed in terms of a, 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 a gauge-like connection and electric field. So there are gravitational uh, uh, closed Faraday lines, and these are the loops we're talking about. Now, question, can we describe a quantum field theory in terms of these loops? Well, the answer is yes to some extent. And uh, let me again take you back to the physics of the 70s. Take a young Mill theory um, on the lattice in the canonical um, uh, picture. So a three-dimensional lattice. This is, a, as far as you keep the lattice space finite, it's perfectly well-defined quantum field theory. There is states and Hilbert space. Uh, operators, dynamics, and so on. Now, in this context, you can define a state by taking the, uh, 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 the product of the uh, uh, group variables, which are the main variables of the, of, of the theory, along a loop, a loop in the lattice. And this state here is a well-defined finite norm state in the, in the Hilbert space of the theory. It has a property of being an eigenstate of the electric field. This is simple. Um, where the eigenvalue has is zero everywhere, it has support on the loop itself. So it's literally a quantum excitation, a single quantum excitation of a Faraday line. Now, these loops, these loop states uh, by themselves do not form a basis in the Hilbert space, but a simple generalization of the same object does. And uh, these are the so-called uh, uh, spin networks. Uh, uh, you take uh, a spin network is a graph on the, on the lattice here. Uh, colored with some uh, representations on the graph links and uh, representation of the gauge group and some intertwiners 
uh, uh, some invariant tensor in the, in the, uh, associated to the nodes. Now, for each one of these objects, you can construct a state, basically by contracting the invariant tensor with the representation elements. And uh, these states, again, have the same properties. So the eigenstate of the electric field uh, where the eigenvalue is concentrated on the graph, and they are basis, on auto autonomous basis in, in, the, in, in the Hilbert space. So, as far as you're on the lattice, you can transform everything to this basis and represent entirely young mill theory in terms of these uh, Faraday lines and operator acting on them. Now, can you do the same on the continuum? The answer is no, uh, essentially because these are too singular. If you uh, uh, move infinitesimally one of these uh, loops in the continuum, you get, uh, you assume this is an orthogonal, orthogonal basis, you, you, you get a, 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 an orthogonal state, and uh, if you take this as a definition of a Hilbert space, you get, you define something much larger than this Hilbert space that you want. 